What's going on? Josh here from Colossus Fitness. Today I'm going to teach you how to use the machine row. Now there's different variants of a machine row. You can do a high row, that would just mean the grips are higher than you. When you're pulling down, you're going to need a little bit more of those lower lats. Um, with the medium row, you're going to get a lot of trap work and some rhomboid work. You know, you're going to be really pulling to the middle of your back there. Then you can do a low row where you're kind of rowing up and you can get a little bit of that shrug motion. Really involve the traps. Once again, most of these rows will work all precursors of your back, uh, but those are just the variants we have. Today we have a mid row. Same rules apply to every row, so that is something to keep in mind. So the first important thing with the row is the setup. You know, obviously bench height and how far this is out. As you can see, if this is really far forward, I can already re reach here. My range of motion is very limited. I can't necessarily get set up. So if you're taller, you want to bring that sucker right back, like for me. And frankly, the farther back you can have it, the better. Because even if you're starting forward a little bit, you know, you never want to shrug forward. You want to make sure you're actually pulling everything tight. This is called retraction of the scapula. The reason this is important is you have a bunch of little vertebrae in your back and this retraction is what's going to pad your muscles on those vertebrae to protect them, make sure you're actively working your back and not damaging your spine. So, if I have to reach for it a little bit, I want to try and make sure I retract best I can. But you can see from here I have full extension and I can really engage that back. So that's the first precursor and the most important thing. From here you're going to pull into your back. Once again, a mistake a lot of people will make is they'll use their spine to do it. If I'm doing this motion and I'm hinging on my spine here, you can see the little B-roll, the difference with Kyle. His back is neutral here and he's pulling into a neutral back versus pulling into that spine. The danger here is you can have hypermobility in the middle of your spine there, cause some damage and you can get chronic back pain. This is something I did wrong before, so I want to prevent other people from doing this too. So make sure you're using your back to pull it. You're staying nice and strong, you have that retraction, but you're not using your spine. So that's what this is going to look like. You can put your feet up or down to the side. You just want to get them out of the way. From here, I have that little tension. I'm strong. I really grip this with as much power as I can. Pulling into my back as far as I can go, stretching out. Now what you never want to do is let it pull you forward. You want to stay in control of it. So I can let it pull against my active back working. So you can see I can go just before the weight actually hits the bottom of the other weights. You kind of get this every time, people are going to look at you funny. If it happens, that's okay, just be more aware. Pull in, big squeeze, stretch it out nice and slow. I like a two to one tempo here. So one, one, two, one, one, two. One, really trying to squeeze that back. One, two, breathe out. In. And that's about it for that. Now Kyle's gonna to talk to you a little bit about grips and what they do for your back. So uh, a lot of times when you go into these exercises, you need to think about what the grip is actually gonna do for you because there's so many different benefits. Starting off, if you wanna go overhand up to the top and you start like this grip and you just pull it all the way back, you're gonna feel it a lot more in your upper back and also your rear delts. So this is a really cool uh, variation. If you wanna go underhand, which is supinated, you're gonna be getting a lot more lower lat and also your biceps. If you wanna go more for a neutral grip, this is just gonna get in that thickness right in the middle of the back and also it's the biomechanically the strongest grip you're ever gonna have. So you're gonna be able to lift the most amount of weight which could give you amazing benefits for your back. So think about it before you go. A fun tip that we always do is before we try any machine, we try all the different variations like where do you feel it the most? Where do you get the best contraction? Where do you actually wanna work when you're doing the specific exercise? And before we jump into the comment six, first link in the description, completely free form guide. It's like a personal trainer in your pocket with all the compound exercises to make sure you're doing proper form. And thumbs up for a bonus mistake. This is something I see so, so, so often. A lot of times people will set up on the row, they're fired up, and then they pretty much just go like this. And the issue here is a lot of times people overcomplicate the movement. They bring their elbows back farther than they need to, and what happens is it puts you in a really uncomfortable position where your elbows go back and your shoulder shoots forward, when all you have to do is just bring your arm to a 90 degree angle, retract the scapula, and stop right here. It's not about going like this. So once again, just to show you two quick reps of what not to do. This is gonna mess up your shoulders. It's gonna avoid you getting the back gains you deserve. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you are looking for an online coach, someone to get you to the next level throughout coaching, uh, basically with a customized workout routine dedicated to your goals, your restrictions, and the days you can hit the gym, as well as macronutrient help and accountability. We're your guys. Second link in the description. We will take care of you at an amazing price. Hit us up and we'll see you soon.